I admit, part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. I understand you've infiltrated the Ministry. The things you discovered there must have been shocking, even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, followed by starvation, followed by a breakdown of society, followed by extinction. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. So that's your solution? Put the whole colony on ice? People ain't gonna stand for this. We'll fight back. We'll tear down the walls of Byzantium. No, Mr. Millstone, you will not. The workers of Halcyon will do exactly as they are told, as they always have. Your dreams of a people's revolution are the juvenile fantasies of a frustrated child. Is that why we were suffering plague in Edgewater? Malnutrition? All those folks sick and dying and you knew why the whole time? Yes, Miss Holcomb, we knew why. We've known for some time that Edgewater was dying. The colony itself is dying. The suffering you experienced in Edgewater, the disease, the starvation, will soon spread across Halcyon unless we act. I won't pretend the truth isn't damning. Yes, the colony is on the verge of collapse, but there is a way to save it. I'll answer however I can. We've already crossed the point of no return. The collapse has already begun. You must have noticed the signs in Emerald Vale. Malnutrition, disease, high mortality rates. This is a permanent famine, Captain. We've done all we can to curb their hunger. Very soon, people are going to realize they're starving. A famine is a problem of logistics as well as marketing. Your workers must remain productive on as little food as possible, and they must always believe that food is plentiful. Before you interfered in Roseway, Dr. Anton Crane was on the verge of developing a powerful appetite suppressant. It would have made his career. The solution is a temporary one. Before long, our workers are going to feel the effects of starvation. The Lifetime Employment Program is our only viable option. When you turned Phineas Wells over to me, I knew I could rely on you. You've demonstrated your ability to place duty above sentiment. And you deliver results. That quality alone is enough to separate you from the board's army of indecisive bureaucrats. Do you know how many meetings I have to sit through? How many papers I have to sign before I can make one decision? I'm only trying to rescue Halcyon from extinction. I can't save this colony alone. I need someone capable of working outside the system. Someone who can get things done. The Lifetime Employment Program is not some malevolent strategy of an evil mastermind. There's no dark secret buried in the fine print. The program is logical, it's reasonable, it's merciful. And most importantly, it will work. Byzantium is the beating heart of our colony. And as long as Byzantium survives, Halcyon may one day recover from the collapse. We must protect this city at any cost. Help me execute the Lifetime Employment Program, and you will have earned a place of honor in Byzantium. You will live in comfort and want for nothing. When I first discovered the truth, I was shocked, even disgusted. I wondered how we'd allowed a colony like Halcyon to fall into disarray. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the colony had sown the seeds of its own destruction. We have become lazy and decadent. We smother ourselves in meaningless bureaucracies. We deliberate, 
and argue and procrastinate. I admit, I occasionally fantasize about making an executive decision without having some tedious committee questioning my every move. Do you have any idea how much paperwork is involved in ordering someone's execution through the usual channels? It's positively maddening. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. Thanks to your meddling, Edgewater is without power. Operations have ground to a halt. You've left us with a useless town draining our resources. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. Are you out of your mind? We're not gonna murder a town of innocent people. You will do exactly as you're told, or I will have you shot for insubordination. You're a monster. Someone has to be. Now is not the time for half-measures, Captain. I need a decision from you. When you diverted power to the Botanical Lab, you spelled the end of Edgewater. But the town is still hanging on, still living off whatever meager resources we send them. With every passing day, Edgewater leeches more of our limited resources. The town is a rotting limb, and we must be surgeons. Edgewater's workers consume six times as many resources as they produce. The best thing that town can do for its colony is to die. I'm not asking you to be a murderer. I'm asking you to be a surgeon. Edgewater is a necrotic limb on the body of the colony. It must be severed. We don't have any other option. A colony is on the verge of collapse, and we no longer have the luxury of easy solutions. I won't. You're better than this, Captain. You have to be. Don't make me choose between you and Edgewater, Captain. Between you and my people, please. I'm glad you can keep control over your associates. Edgewater is beyond saving. We're going to have to erase the town, but we're going to do it systematically. You were in the Emerald Vale Geothermal Plant. Do you remember what you discovered there? There was an accident at the Emerald Vale Geothermal Plant many years ago. Auto mechanicals turned hostile and slaughtered the plant's workers. Tragic, really. In fact, Spacer's Choice manufactured the incident for an insurance claim. They outfitted their mechanicals with a termination protocol, which is exactly what we need. The insurance claim has been locked in committee for years, but the individual responsible for the accident was promoted for lateral thinking. I'm arranging for a delivery of mechanicals to Edgewater, these mechanicals have been equipped with the same termination protocol, which must be activated from a terminal in the plant. Once the mechanicals are finished cleaning out Edgewater, I'll need you to go in and clean out the mechanicals. Understand? One last thing. Spacer's Choice sent a team of soldiers to investigate your little misadventure in the geothermal plant. Tread lightly. I like you, Captain, but you're not worth that much paperwork. I prefer keeping our relationship strictly off the books. Report back to me when the job's done. You're not really thinking of going through with this plan, right? Tell me I'm imagining things. That's Parvati's hometown. You're just gonna wipe it out? Vicar Max lived in Edgewater. We got folk from our own crew that called that place home. If you don't like this job, and I don't like this job, and nobody else on this ship likes this job, then why are you going through with it? Edgewater is a corporate town, not some marauder camp. They're asking you to wipe out their own people. I want to trust you, boss, but I'm going to need more than just your word. I need an explanation. I ain't asking you to do anything for me. I'm asking you to do the right thing. 
And if you can't, then we're not going to be on good terms. Never mind. Let's just move on. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. This area is currently experiencing a surprise audit. Turn around and head back to your designated workplace or domicile. Oh, uh, yes. Absolutely. A real stickler for the rules. Hard-ass Hogarth, that's what they call me. That's, uh, that's Hogarth with one G, by the way, if you're putting in a good word with the Honorable Adjutant. Don't let me get in your way. Go on through. I've just been informed that the problem of Edgewater has been permanently resolved. I know. But you acquitted yourself with honor. You performed your duty, as hard as it was. You should be proud of yourself, Captain. You're on the verge of making history. There's just one last job I need you to do for me. I've made arrangements for you to journey to the Hope. You will board your former colony ship, reactivate its navigation systems, and skip the colony ship into orbit around Tartarus. Once the Hope is in position, we will have everything we need to begin healing the colony. You've proven yourself more than capable. I don't know if there's anyone better suited to this mission than you. Give yourself some credit, Captain. You've come this far without dying in some senseless accident. Clearly, the Architect has a plan for you. Technology, Captain. The same technology that allowed you and your fellow colonists to make the journey from Earth to Halcyon. Under the Lifetime Employment Program, every suitable worker in Halcyon will be placed in suspended animation. The Hope is the perfect storage facility for the colony's workers. I won't lie to you. We're going to have to dispose of some of the Hope settlers in order to make room for Halcyon's rotating workforce. But try to understand, many of your fellow settlers are beyond saving. They've been frozen for far too long, and the revival process would be lethal. Convenience. The Hope is a massive ship and we'll need to make use of it. Our facilities in Tartarus will benefit from having the ship within orbit. The Hope has been out of commission for years. You'll need to connect your own ship to the Hope's auxiliary power supply. Then make your way to the Hope's bridge. Your ship's computer will activate the Hope's skip drive and bring you into orbit around Tartarus. I have the highest faith in your abilities, Captain. You and I are going to save Halcyon together. Here's what I don't understand. The Hope. Big damn colony ship, right? Lost on the edge of space, hundreds of thousands of colonists floating out there just waiting for a savior. And you're just gonna deliver them into the hands of the board? Why? Because I'm just some whole head from the Groundbreaker? At least I know right from wrong. It's just wrong. The board's already got a stranglehold on the entire colony. You're about to give them another ship full of slaves. I don't know what to think. It's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust the board. And right now, it's like the board's inside your head. I'd say you're spinning me a story. I know you, boss. Don't try to pull one over on me. Then I guess we got nothing more to say to each other. Captain, you have an incoming transmission from Tartarus. Attention, Captain of the Unreliable. This is Chairman Rockwell. I'm on Tartarus and, uh, we need your help. That crackpot scientist has caused a riot among the prisoners and unpaid laborers. It's a law-damned bloodbath down here. As if that weren't enough, he's gone and taken Sophia hostage. I'm not gonna mince words. The situation is dire. We... I... need your help. He lost his mind years ago. 
Do you have any idea how many Hope colonists he's killed for the sake of his science experiments? I don't know. They're in the pit somewhere. It's a... Well, you'll see for yourself when you get here. Among other things, we can't run this place without her, Captain. Make haste, Captain. We're losing men by the... Oh, fuck. Fuck! They're at the door! I need to hide! Hurry! Captain, as it appears we may soon be embarking for a maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. So long as I can recall, I've been eager to get back at the board for fucking my life up. Here we are about to go rescue them? They better shower us in riches and accolades. I don't care much for Adjutant Takande, but if she dies, all our work goes up in flames. Captain, your service to the board has been invaluable. If you wish to claim your rightful place in Byzantium, you must help them crush the riots in the labyrinth. Don't take it personal. That's just a Tuesday for the board. If they offer us a retirement plan, we'll know they've reneged on their deal. Otherwise, I'm keeping good faith. Hey, don't look at me. You already know what I think about the board. You ought to worry more about Doc Wells. He's gone round the bend, boss. If anybody can talk some sense into him, it's you. Whatever may await you, it's best not to dock at the prison until you're sure you've settled your affairs and closed out any unfinished business. No complaints here. If this works, we'll be set for life. None of that, boss. We got us a job to do. Let's just get it done. For the record, I didn't ask you to. And I thank you for that, Captain. Serving with you has been a pleasure. I don't think I want that weight on my shoulders, Captain. Waiting on your command, Captain. Captain, I am pleased to inform you that we have successfully landed on Tartarus. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another Captain unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. You're the backup, right? From Akande? Thank the law you're here. These bloodthirsty sprat bags have no respect for the law. We're pinned down. Good. Came through a while ago, but we haven't heard from him or Adjutant Akande in, in too long. You've got to help us. Please, kill them. Summary justice for the whole lot. Bust through? Are you out of your mind? Those animals will tear us apart. Oh, law. You're right. Okay. Come on, guys. Rifles up. Let's kick these rung leeches out of our docking bay. For the chairman. Tartarus security out. Hang on. Is that another ship coming in? I think that's from the groundbreaker. Cripes, did that Tennyson woman really send reinforcements? Between you and the Mardettes, we may be able to retake the docks. Good luck out there, Captain. Transmission terminated. How can I be of assistance? See you soon, Captain. You know, I could have sworn I tested you for hearing loss, because I did say skip the hope to Terra 2. Terra 2, not Tartarus. We could have saved this colony, you know. That was always the plan. I revive you, you do as I say. I tell you to go there, get me this, shoot that, and you do as I say. 
If you'd just listened to me, we could have rescued everyone on the Hope. We could have been the saviors of Halcyon. But you didn't listen. No one in this damn colony ever listens. Fighting back! I've released every prisoner in Tartarus. We'll take this prison over, or die in the attempt. We will not go quietly into the night. I know the board's recruited you. What with your talent for subterfuge, and your penchant for slipping around through the shadows. I don't care how many guns you've brought. If you try and stop me, by law, I'll bloody your damned nose. I haven't lost yet. I've still got air in my lungs. I've got strength enough to fire a gun, and I've got Halcyon's greatest monster strapped to a chair. Adjutant Akande is my captive. If I'm to die here, then she's coming with me. No, it won't change anything. We're plunging headlong into oblivion now, you and I. Killing Akande won't save us, but it will feel incredibly good. If you insist on interfering, I will be forced to kill you, and I don't want that. I can't imagine we've got anything left to say. Of course you had a choice. You could have chosen any number of ways to tell the board to get spaced. You're one of the most cunning freelancers Halcyon has ever seen. You should have been able to evade the board's grasp. I don't want to hear that. Not from you. The board's only strong because no one fights back. Let go. I've barely got anything left. A few tattered shreds of my dignity. A gun. My life's work has been an exercise in futility. The only honorable way to end it is to go down fighting. Surrender? Oh, I've had a bounty on my head for years. What do you expect will happen if I surrender? Torture. Execution. The board has already extracted the secret of reviving colonists from me. I'm no longer useful to them, so they'll make an example of me. You're trying to tempt me with your lies. It won't work. I'll never return to working for the board. Not if all the lives in Halcyon depended on it. Enough! I can't take any more of this. I know what you're trying to do, torturing me with your words. Reminding me of all my failures. Yes, I failed. There, I've said it. I'm a failure. I failed the colony. I failed myself. I failed you. Congratulations. You've broken me. Does that put a smile on your face, you monster? So, you found out. I suppose it's not enough that you ruin my every plan. You must also humiliate me by reminding me of my failures. Yes, I've killed people. Is that what you wanted to hear? I experimented on dozens of the Hope's colonists. Every last one of them died in agony. They were never patients. No, they were just things. Husks of frozen organic matter. It was only when the screaming started that they became people. It always starts with screaming, followed by thrashing, followed by cell death. The average human adult takes 93 seconds to completely liquefy. I had hoped reviving the colonists would make everything better. I could somehow undo all my mistakes by finding that one elusive solution. I had hoped the end would justify the means. Oh, how wrong I was. Nothing can justify what I've done. I'm sorry for all that I've done, and for what I'm about to do.
There's no other way this could possibly end. You and I both know that. I'm sorry about all this. I'm sorry about everything. It's just, I just wish we could have... Never mind. It doesn't matter. Thank the law you're here. That madman was out of control. At least Wells did you the courtesy of saving you a bullet. I'll have one of my soldiers toss his body out on the surface. And what about you? You aren't hurt, I hope. Why shouldn't I be interested in the well-being of my finest agent? Not to mention my most valuable investment. You've put down the worst riot in our history. Rid the colony of a dangerous madman and saved my life. The board owes you a tremendous debt. We don't have a moment to lose. We're gonna have to work together to save Halcyon, because the situation is far worse than you imagined. We've lost all contact with Earth. It's been three years since we've received a message. We've had no contact, no signals, nothing. Earth has gone dark. Two years ago, the Earth Directorate's frigate disappeared en route to Earth. We don't know if they ever made it. We don't know if there's an Earth to go back to. Earth's gone dark, and you've been covering it up for three years? The colony deserves to know the truth. The colony deserves peace of mind, Mr. Millstone. Right now, it's our job to protect Halcyon from the truth. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? You sound frightened, Miss Holcomb. You should be. Fear sharpens the mind. We're alone, Captain. That's all I know for certain. Whatever happens to this colony, we're going to have to deal with it on our own. Returning to Earth is not an option. I'll answer however I can. I can't say for certain, but all my data suggests that Earth has experienced a massive calamity. I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I'm not sure there's an Earth to go back to. I couldn't risk this news getting out. Before you, the two people in this colony who knew the truth were Chairman Rockwell and I. I had every intention of telling you the truth after you'd skipped the hope to Tartarus. Unfortunately, Phineas Wells chose that moment to start a riot. The Earth Directorate's frigate accounts for half of our military forces. Two years ago, that frigate disappeared while returning to Earth. We haven't heard a word back. Without the Directorate's frigate, our military forces are barely capable of maintaining control over this colony. Not a word. We received our last message three years ago. Our every attempt at reaching out to Earth has been met with absolute silence. Yes, we do have a long road ahead of us. But I have faith in you. The service you've done for this colony is nothing short of extraordinary. You're the reason I'm still standing here today. The board will survive because of you. And as the board goes, so goes Halcyon. It's time we carried out the program. I trust I can count on your support, Captain. I support your decision wholeheartedly. You've proven yourself the most capable leader in the colony. Now more than ever before, Halcyon needs strong leadership and a steady guiding hand. I look forward to serving as your adjutant. We're on our own now. Earth isn't coming to save us, so we're going to have to save ourselves. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The riots in Tartarus ended in a total victory for the board. Without any significant threats to challenge their power, the board asserted their control over the colony. The lifetime employment program began immediately, and the people of Halcyon did exactly what they were expected to do. They obeyed. 
Sophia Akande converted the labyrinth from a prison to a processing center. She jettisoned the original colonists out of the home and transformed the ship into a massive storage facility. One by one, the workers of Halcyon surrendered themselves to the program. They arrived with their families and their friends, their colleagues and their neighbors. And then, one by one, they marched into their stasis chambers. As the workers of Halcyon slept in their hibernation chambers, their settlements became ghost towns, left behind by the board to be reclaimed by nature. Only Byzantium remained, a shining beacon of civilization in an otherwise abandoned colony. The people of Byzantium spent the rest of their days gorging themselves on their stockpile of resources. As for the workers of Halcyon, they never felt the effects of the collapse. They never felt anything at all. As the board began to enact the lifetime employment program, Sanjar and Zora brought another option to the townships of Terra II. Many workers joined MSI, bolstering Sanjar's ranks and giving Zora more forces to work with. Though none of Sanjar's policies spread to Byzantium, Many smaller townships that might otherwise have been shuttered thrived under his and Zora's combined leadership. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Over the years, the ruins of Edgewater caused irreversible environmental damage to the landscape of Emerald Vale, owing largely to the presence of toxic compounds in the town's building materials. As for Edgewater's former workers, their remains provided a source of nourishment for the region's fauna, leading to an explosion in the Sprat population. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide Medevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. It was only a matter of time before the adjutant sent her troops to wipe out Adelaide's town. Only one deserter escaped the massacre. He was believed to be carrying the last remaining copy of Adelaide's research. The bounty on his head remains unclaimed. While the groundbreaker remained mechanically stable, the changing times forced Junlei Tennyson to make some difficult calls on behalf of her community. The work of maintaining independence was an uphill climb, and she found herself caving to bad faith compromises with the board. Time will tell if the groundbreaker can endure. As smaller settlements were swallowed up and their workers drafted into the lifetime employment program, Byzantium continued to thrive. While its citizens lived in decadence and extravagance, a small cadre of scientists worked to solve the nutrition crisis that threatened Halcyon. No one else much noticed the townships that disappeared from the map or the luxuries that slowly lost their luster year by year. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people, sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. As the board reasserted control over Halcyon, Felix came to realize that his life as an upstart rebel had come to an end. The board's victory crushed any hope for a grand revolution across Halcyon. And so Felix, once again, found himself without a purpose in life. And so, disillusioned with his former boss and with nowhere left to go, Felix left his crew without saying goodbye. He was never heard from again.
As a reward for his part in her courageous rescue, the adjutant invited the vicar known as Max to become one of the leaders of the Order of Scientific Inquiry. But Max had no interest in serving any organization, let alone the OSI, which he knew would never tolerate his heretical theories. Instead, he attempted to minister to the people of Byzantium. They rejected his ideas, being far too satisfied with their own material comforts. Disillusioned, Max gave up and left the city. He was never heard from again. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, Junle bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. As the board began to roll out their lifetime employment program, Parvati was increasingly plagued by dreams of freezing to death and rarely left their shared quarters. Stymied by dwindling resources, Junle struggled to keep the groundbreaker afloat. Their relationship couldn't survive the strain. Parvati moved into crew quarters and found work servicing water pumps in hydroponics. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Adjutant Sophia Akande was instrumental in executing the Lifetime Employment Program. Following the death of Chairman Rockwell, Sophia Akande served as the loyal adjutant to her former freelancer, now the most powerful person in Halcyon. With Halcyon's workers suspended in a state of hibernation, starvation and chaos are problems of the past. The Lifetime Employment Program succeeded in its goals, but that success came at a price. The Halcyon of today is nothing at all like the colony of yesteryear. Power remains concentrated in Byzantium, but all the colony's resources serve the lifestyle of the elite, thereby transforming Halcyon into one of the smallest and most exclusive colonies in the system. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. With Sophia Akande as your adjutant, you returned in triumph to Byzantium. All of Halcyon was yours. In time, you demonstrated a talent for leadership that far surpassed your predecessor, Chairman Rockwell. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years to follow and helped ensure the colony's survival. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.